Hi everybody, welcome back. Walking through uh, more of the panel build, part five I think this is, and uh, basically just doing some more wiring, showing you some of that, uh, starting to plan out how I do some of my cable management and uh, some lessons learned as we go through this. So hopefully you enjoy it. And if you do, uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Cheers. Uh, doing more work. Uh, a lot of it's not gonna be very visible but uh, added some more uh, breakers that I needed to add. Um, been doing a lot more on the wiring, kind of thinking about how I'm gonna organize it. You know, just temporarily, just putting some cable ties on here just to kind of see how I can get it organized appropriately. Um, starting to fill in more of the connectors. And uh, actually, one of the ones that's interesting is uh, this connector right here, this guy. This is the connector for the G5, and um, it's a little different. This has the lightning protection on it, and you'll see there's some wires coming off the back here. So basically, when you get this plug, it has uh, seven wires on it. <clears throat> you take three of them, and you put them into the actual connector that goes back into the back of the G5. Those three are for power. Um, one is for a CAN bus high, CAN bus low, and uh, then what you do is you take the other side of these connectors, so their corresponding color is slightly different. One's uh, on the inside are striped, these are solid. And then you take these and you run them to power, lightning bus, uh, sorry, CAN bus, high and low. And then of course this guy here is for the shield. And uh, they have some very specific requirements for this as far as lengths. Um, so you really have to look at it, but you can see kind of I've got them bent back in here. And now that I've got these, what I have to do is I have to hook these into my CAN bus and power. The power doesn't matter what the length is, but the CAN bus um, also has a very strict rules around it. So anyway, it's a little different, but uh, nothing too dramatic. But uh, I figured I'd point that out. It's just a little different from all the other ones that I've been doing. But like I said, making a lot more progress on the wiring, just cleaning it up, making sure I got all the appropriate labels on there. And uh, I, need to, uh, I need to get back to finishing off uh, mounting the radio. Uh, I've thought about that a little more and I'll do a little bit of an update on that once I get that figured out. But uh, you know, really trying to get the connectors to the point where they're finished on the back of my G3X Touch that is uh, pretty much done. I've got, uh, I think, two more wires to put in there. And then I can close that one up and go from there. And assembling my back shell <clears throat> for my uh, G3X Touch. And in here you can see I've mounted the configuration module, screwed it in. Uh, it's just about to put this, this back shell together. And odd thing is, in the kit, it came with this pin. It's a, it's a strange little pin. It looks like a normal pin, but uh, it's got that flat side on it. I'm not sure what it's for. And I didn't see anything referred to in the documentation, at least obvious. So uh, I don't know, maybe I'll have to reach out and see. Uh, unless anyone out there knows what it is. If you do, it'd be great to get a comment on it. Thanks. Working on putting the dimmer in for the displays. So what I did is I got this double gang pot and then I soldered on these connectors to it. And the advantage of this is now one pot will actually adjust more than one device. Now I can connect other ones up to it anyway, but this way it's a little cleaner. So uh, we'll see how well it works out. I haven't got it quite connected yet, but you can see here I've got the white lead, lead goes to my PFD display. So that should dim the PFD display and you have it such that um, if it's, and you can set it, if there's no voltage coming out of this, then your PFD just uses whatever. Uh, but as soon as you start adjusting it, it'll, it'll adjust it uh, according to this potentiometer. So I'm gonna wire that up. You can see here, I've got both of the gangs on here wired to the greens and the red. So power and ground, 10K pot. I've got a couple of them. So I'm gonna use this one for my PFD, my MFD, and then I have a separate one I'm probably gonna use for my uh, 
650 nav. And I'm not going to bother with anything else. And I may actually hook up my AOA to this as well, so that when I just dim all of these, it gets all dimmed together. So that's what I've been working on here. And then on top of that, a lot more around the connectors, wiring these guys up. I've got that done. A lot more to back shells on here, cleaning up a lot of the wiring. Still got a bit to do, but uh, you can kind of see where it's heading. And uh, I mean, it's amazing. You know, I was uh, looking at it and going, oh, you know, I've got all these connectors, back shells done. It's looking a lot better. And then I come back down and look and I go, wow, there's still a mess of wires in here. And then the other thing that I've done is um, I've started wiring up my uh, 240 again for my audio panel. Still got to mount that and I'll do that next, I think. But uh, now I've started, I'm not soldering on a wire on here anymore. I'm just going to leave it like it is, put the connector on it and touch to the back shell. I've seen that on RV Gym. And it's how I actually started. And then I followed one of the Garmin videos and I thought, no, this is a lot easier. Should work really well. And uh, just makes it a little easier to do. Hey everyone, another quick update. Um, trying to figure out my go around button or take off go around button. So I put it here. I have this in demo mode. And what you can see here is if I use my autopilot and I set my altitude to, let's say, 7,000 feet. Not sure if you can see it, but it's on here. I've got it on nav. So it's just flying along in the demo mode. By the way, to get in demo mode, in case you've forgotten, when it's starting up, just hold the direct to button and it'll go into demo mode for you. Now, I haven't configured the takeoff go around, but it's default, I think it's seven and a half degrees. And so now that it's set, what I can actually do is I press the button and what you'll see is immediately, oh, let me go back here. Immediately you can see it wants to do a nose up to about seven and a half degrees. If I then put the autopilot back on, it'll automatically go into that and it'll start the climb. So basically taking the autopilot out of suspend and now it's doing the climb automatically up to that, uh, that altitude that I programmed in. Just trying to figure out where to put it. Um, I originally had cut a hole here, but the bracket on the back is in the way. I don't really wanna trim that back much. Uh, still trying to figure out what to do with all my switches for my lights or my dimmers. Uh, but I figure this might be good between the two uh, displays. Uh, but I'll try it out and see how it works there. Just another quick piece for, uh, for everyone. Cheers. Bye. I mounted the CO2 carbon monoxide sensor by Air, Air There Shield uh, unit. Um, I found this spot behind it over here next to just on the back of the panel it just needs somewhere these this one only has three wires you can get a different model it does some others but i only wanted this and that's run to the gea 24 and i put it on uh, general purpose input one the one thing you got to note is depending on which inputs you use on the gea 24 you may need to ground the black wire um, because the inputs on the gea 24 i think general purpose five and six are not necessarily ground all the time um, when the ground wire, where the ground wire goes. So you just need to keep that in mind. If it's not, then you need to ground it. But in my case, I put it in general purpose one and uh, it works pretty good. And then what you do is you have to do the calibration. <clears throat> you go into the configuration on the G3X, you pull up the GEA 24, and uh, when you go in, you configure it such that the calibration zero is zero, and then 3.3 volts is 255, and then you set up your appropriate alarms. And the alarms that I have set up, I think, are zero to 50 parts per million. Uh, is that right? Uh, maybe it's zero to 10 parts per million is uh, green. 10 to 50 is yellow and anything above 50 is red and on the yellows and the reds i actually have an alarm uh, that comes up as well on the main display 
And one of the things that, uh, I'm not sure if you'll see this, but if I start the unit up, <clears throat> one of the things you'll see on the, uh, on the right side, well, I guess yeah, it's the right side right now, but one of the things you'll see is when the unit starts up, it actually sets initially for, I think it's about a minute, it has the input reading set to two, to the max. So if you see it right here, you'll see it's reading 247. And I have a, you know, I have it on here as an alarm. It shows up as a CO2 alarm. And uh, after, after just a little bit, it'll actually go down. But uh, let's see here now. Give it a minute. And uh, the bar here should become white and this display arrow will go down and it'll go down to, uh, I think a one or maybe a two. But it wasn't very hard to put in, just a matter of finding the right spot to put it and uh, just connect it up to GA24, whatever input you have, there you go. You see it's chasing down, yellow, and then ultimately white. And now you'll see it's uh, one. And that's all there is to it. The only thing I did, and you're not likely going to be able to see this because I've got it taped over in here, but I didn't want to go waste a connector for this. So I did one of the things that uh, I seen Steinier do, which was a recommendation. So basically what you can do is you just take the raw pins. I haven't got any here close, but take the pins, put the pin on them, put the two pins together and then put heat shrink over them. And uh, if you shrink that down, it'll be a pain if you ever need to take it off, but something like that unit's calibrated, it's good for 10 years. It's not something you're gonna have to take off very often. Um, if you do need to take it off, you just gotta cut through the, uh, the heat shrink tubing and then you can just pull the pins apart. But it's a lot simpler and a lot cleaner than just going and going out and getting another connector for just three pins for something you don't really need to mess with too much. Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Cheers. Bye now. Another quick update. Um, doing a lot more work on the wiring. Still trying to get all the routing down. You'll see I've got uh, at least where I think I'm going to mount these now on this side. I like mounting them on the back here like this. Looks like it'll keep the wires off the, you know, off the frame. It should be a nice little standoff and should keep them together pretty good. And then also I've been, uh, you know, I wired in the switches for my lights. Um, you can see those kind of running here, the grounds and the actual switch wires. And then on the other side, this is the feedback wires that actually show or light up the light. Now I can't wire those in permanently until I put the white lights in them themselves, but at least it's, uh, it's coming together. The other thing, and oh, actually here, you can actually see them coming into connectors. I've also decided I'm gonna put these same things on this side, same way, I'll mount them underneath here. It, uh, it keeps them out of the way and uh, it's pretty easy to, uh, to manage. Might be a little bit of a pain to put screws in here, but uh, overall, I think it'll be worth it considering uh, how well it's gonna to come together like that. The other thing I've been doing is uh, started doing some lacing. Not an expert on this by any stretch of the imagination, but kind of just giving you an idea how it's gonna look. Um, I think it's coming out pretty good. Uh, the one thing I might do different is when I have a branch off like this, uh, I didn't tie it off. I think going forward I might. <clears throat> I think tying it off will make it just a little cleaner. And uh, you know, that's, this lacing is what I'll do for all the wiring in the back. So, you know, there won't be any of these uh, cable ties or very few of them. Um, this will all be laced together and then have branch offs for the bundles um, that I think will come in pretty good. And uh, other than that, I think the other big thing for me is trying to decide <clears throat> these two switches here I put in because right now I'm thinking I'm gonna use two P mags for my uh, magnetos on the engine. 
and the PMAGs have their own power generation. So if you lose panel power or you lose aircraft power, they'll continue to run without it. Whether I go with two or one, I don't know yet. Uh, something I have to think about. But I put these switches on here to enable me to shut down the power to those PMAGs during run-up to do the testing, which is something you really need to do to make sure that the generator inside the PMAG is actually generating the, the power it needs. But uh, running a little low on panel space, I can also do these switches from inside the... Uh, G the G3X through the vertical power. So I could actually just bring up the panel and then do it in here. I really don't want to have a mistake of leaving these off. Uh, so that may be the way I wanna go because what I am missing right now is I've got everything else. What I'm missing is my uh, switches for my alternators and I'll have a backup alternator. So I really need to figure out where to put those. So I'm thinking maybe I might use these for my alternator power instead but uh, haven't quite decided for sure. Just a quick one for lessons learned. Um, I had cut out this hole for a light that I was putting here for the baggage area, which was originally looking pretty good. And the light itself actually is right here. And I really like it, you know, you can flip it, but the problem becomes the height of this on the back or the depth, I guess. So because I'm going to run forced air in here, I need this all to be sealed. So I thought no problem. What I'll do is I'll put that in. I'll do a little bit of fiberglass over the top of it and it should be good. But because I cut this so far back, the height here doesn't allow me to put anything behind it. It's already going to touch the top of the canopy. So just having to rethink it, I'll probably just buy a flush mount one that I can screw on here over this opening. And uh, then I won't have to seal it anyway. So that just makes it easier, but something to watch out for as you're, uh, as you're thinking about some of this stuff, uh, just making sure you understand kind of how it's going to work. And, uh, you know, I never thought about the pressurizing it. I actually figured the ducting would go to these, but it doesn't. So just something for you to think about as you go through it. Cheers.